Welcome to the next episode of CEOs Wear Sneakers, broadcast from our headquarters in downtown LA. I'm here with my homie, homie, <laughs> homie Diaz. Welcome. Never gets old. Never gets old. It uh, certainly does for you, not for me. Uh, welcome <laughs> to the show. And today we have a great story of entrepreneurship and not your typical tech startup or streetwear clothing brand. This is someone you've either never heard of or is the biggest hero in the in your world. His videos aimed at kids between two and six years old have been viewed over a billion times on YouTube alone. And he is Stephen John, a.k.a. children's entertainer and YouTuber Blippi. Stephen, welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's not often that we have a, a billion viewed uh, person in our studio, so we're very <laughs> honored. Yeah. Well, I'm, um, I'm honored to be here. So yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And when I say um, you're either unheard of or uh, the b biggest hero in people's world is you have a very specific audience you're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, two to six years old, like you hit it on uh, the, the tip. And every single day it's, you know, blippy, blippy, blippy for the, the people that watch. I mean, yeah. your, your child, I know, is a, is a fan. And absolutely. Um, yeah. It's just crazy hearing the stories and. When it comes to the billion, it's I think five now. So yep, it's, it's definitely yeah, five billion. It's, now. it's five billion yeah, views. Yeah, I think yep. it's I all think told. So. Yeah, across how yeah. many videos? Uh, a couple hundred, a, yeah. a few hundred, but there's a few channels like that's including Spanish as well. Yeah. Um, so and that's doing crazy, like Spanish content in general, and and it's super cool being able to provide Spanish content for sure. people for free which is awesome. Although I don't speak Spanish, I wish I did because that would be pretty cool. So someone, you heard some videos translated? Yeah, yeah, they're dubbed. Yeah, my and son then... knows the excavator song in English and Spanish. Oh, really? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> now, did we find you um, because of your kids, homie, watching the show or? Yeah. So basically I came home one day and my son was about 16 months old and he's like, I want Blippi, I want Blippi. And I'm like, what's that? And my wife's like, oh, it's a on youtube so i look it up and i i literally watched my son watch you for maybe 10 hours straight not blinking and i said i have to call this guy that's yeah. quality parenting by the way homie <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours it's glued to youtube literally you're just chilling yeah yeah i was like yeah. oh this is what it takes yeah. oh blippy's the man yeah. yeah in my my kids generation my kids are now uh 13 and 11 but back then mm -hmm. i think it was baby einstein would have been yeah would have yeah. been something that they would yep. it was probably equivalent but less action in, in baby einstein i think but right. Right. the kids just glued to it and parents are like oh my god you're the savior yeah. of my life sanity yeah right. yeah i think every generation has has those like my generation was uh blues clues yep. yeah. That, yep. That, yeah that was a huge one um rugrats yep. obviously hey arnold all of those like Nick, nickelodeon nick jr is yeah, resonates. I mean, is Blippi forever. now the show for this this age group? Uh, I'd like to think so. I mean, there, there's definitely other ones out there across the world, which is yeah. super nice to be able to have that to where technology can allow for anyone and everyone to do whatever. And it isn't just corporations doing these shows. You know, it, it could be started from a garage like, like yeah. I did. Or And are you 100% yeah. on YouTube? Uh, no, YouTube, Amazon, Roku, Kadoodle TV. But any cable? No cable right now, no. Okay, so you're, are you, and you're competing with cable yeah, channels, yeah. presumably. Yeah, and I mean, I have a lot of ideas of um, the future and what content is going to be for children and adults as well. But like, say, cable, for example, they're not necessarily on YouTube, but I feel like one of the reasons why they're not because i feel like they realize that they're missing out on some things i think that they realize their competitors are people like me that can do things for super super cheap compared to them if they rolled it into uh youtube you know maybe the advertisers aren't paying as much as what advertisers on cable would be paying and so they don't want to put something on there and potentially fail because then it would be a huge fail because of how right. much money they're spending on creating the content itself um, I mean, your, to, fir your yeah. first shows what yeah. was the cost of those shows putting them out onto youtube uh zero definitely I mean, zero i mean nothing uh, uh, yeah other than paying for gas to drive to a place or it was mainly time yeah um but back then i i felt like my time wasn't as valuable financially as w what it is 
now, obviously, um, looking at it from a financial s- stance, but just it just took time, and that's all it took. Yeah. Um, which is going back to uh, technology in general, where anyone can do anything nowadays, as long as, and it doesn't even require capital, it requires time and skills. So as long right. as you have skills, and even if you don't have skills, you can learn skills online for free. I, right, I guess you need internet, but. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, you know, you're almost, you're definitely an advantage as a, it sounds crazy to say you're an advantage as a YouTuber over cable television, considering the budgets and the power and the reach in that you could create a show well, you did create a show for zero money in the garage. Yeah. Yet you obviously had a disadvantage in that you have no viewers. So you have to yeah. still, totally. it's not as easy as that. You've yeah. got to earn yeah. a massive viewership, which you've, yeah. you've been able to do. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, tell us how this obviously is a, a simple question, but a very mm-hmm. probably not a simple answer, but right. building an audience of this size um, over a fairly, we're talking about probably two, three years, would you say? Yeah. I mean, it, it's in that coming, audience build phase. Right. Yeah. It's coming up on five years total from the time that I did pre-production of drawing my idea what this character would look like to now. But in general, I'd say the first year was um kind of getting the show up and running of how it's gonna look like or how it's gonna feel like what this character acts like because you could see in the first year videos i act a little different than what i do now <laughs> like some of the videos if i rewatch, i'm like yeah like like <laughs> i am energetic in the videos but like even more ah! and then and i you just pulled that back now <laughs> yeah or? yeah i pulled it back a little bit <laughs> um just from learning of primarily parents being like uh, this guy's crazy and too much energy. But like, obviously, for something popular, you need um, everyone's approval. Uh, or your target audience, for me at least, is two to six years old. But their parents, it's just as much of a target audience as, right. as the children. They need to approve it as well. And but if it just annoys them tons, then yeah, they're, they're not going to let their child watch it. Right. But, and then when you started, was the was you actually started to create for your nephew. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he was, so I lived in LA for about six years or so. And that's when I learned my skill set of videography and online marketing. So being able to create a cheap, if not free video, that's good. And then online marketing. So SEO, PPC campaigns, I develop web websites for clients and then uh, shoot a video, put on their website, use that video, do pre-roll ads. Um, so that's where I had my skills. But then I, I moved back up to Washington State. And then from there, I watched my nephew watching YouTube videos. Because at this time, it was, like I said, five years ago, 2013 or so, 2014, right around that time. Um, and they he would watch YouTube videos and it'd just be like say tractors with background music nothing educational about it because my sister uh, would give him the iPad to watch free content because it was yeah. free um, and so I just saw that there was this area that I knew was going to continue to grow the internet YouTube and all that stuff um, that didn't have any good quality content on there and I believe that was just because everyone creating content and it not just for children's content it was for a lot of stuff, you know, music yeah. videos, the biggest and best music videos would go on um, cable still and all that. But then everyone was starting to roll everything into YouTube, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, all, all of those. And so I just thought, ah, maybe I could create a kid show for him that in- incorporates things that he loves, like tractors, diggers, airplanes, animals, but then put in education with it, like numbers, color, shapes, which is the things that he yeah. needed to learn at the time. Yeah, you've actually, I'd say your content is slightly different in that you're actually taking, you're teaching real situations. So, mm-hmm. I've, you know, you've done things like been to a recycle center yeah. or, so that's not your typical kid show. Right, right. So at the, actually that that's a really good point. At the beginning, I just thought, okay, I need to make it educational. And so I would really do a lot of focus on say shapes. But now, um, you know, looking in the past of what I really liked as a child, like Mr. Rogers or, you know, uh, how it's made, even when I was a teen, like actually seeing things be created, um, see things be made, see the real world. And so that's one thing that I really want to continue to do with Blippi is 
go out in the real world, show these children things that they can't necessarily see on their own, like a recycling facility. Um, I, yeah, just a lot of, <laughs> I could go on of things that I've done uh, with Blippi, which is super, super cool and super fun. Give me but, some things, some of your favorites. Uh, like the helicopter uh, pilot episode was super cool. LAPD helicopter really? pilot police. Yeah, that episode was crazy because um, I took a two hour flight with them and they were on the job so we were actually fighting crime and i couldn't show that obviously to you know a two-year-old but uh, <laughs> imagine if you yeah, imagine if you're on yeah. a burglary and blippy's yeah. going running after you down the street no it, it was crazy like <laughs> every call we went on there was people with <laughs> with guns and stuff and it was in your banking at in the helicopter looking down and when you look left that's the the ground and it was just that was super crazy to see but you know in the video it was a Good fun, safe day in right. LA right. that day. So that that was pretty fun. Um, we just filmed the seaplane video. That yeah. was just fun. I, I've had a, I've driven a monster truck. That was pretty cool. Never, so now is yeah. that you're able to? You're at a point where you could any idea you have you could probably execute now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it takes still a little bit of work. There's a lot more reactive things happening um where people are emailing us being like hey do you want to do this yeah which is super nice but we still have to email people like hey can we do this but then and i think uh a lot of it of things that we can do and can't do it it is determined on who the employees are the management in those companies do they realize that new media is powerful compared to some companies are like dinosaurs and they mm -hmm. they don't even look at Netflix or YouTube as legitimate platforms. And so like say you folks, obviously you realize that the internet has power and people can influence people on, on there in, sure. in good positive ways. And so, yeah, so some, some companies are still hard to yeah. work with. Now, when you started out, did you have a background in theater or acting or? No. Not at all. No. And in fact, you were in the Army. Is that true? Air Force. Air Force. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so how long were you in the Air Force for? Uh, just one term. So, okay. Yeah, I didn't re-enlist. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Yeah. And I just realized, like, I don't know if I want to concentrate on missiles yeah. shooting. In my <laughs> life. Life goal. Yeah. And so during the time, it was really cool. But at the same time, it was like, uh, I don't know if I want to continue to do this. Yeah. So, so being a children's entertainer was never in the life plan back then? No, not at all. Even um, moving up to Washington after living in L.A., you know, doing commercials. And so I wanted to, like, direct and film uh, music videos and feature films and stuff like that. But then I just – I moved up to Washington to buy a couple rental properties because my dad had rental properties. And while I was up there, I realized that I had a lot of free time. And so that's when I saw my nephew watching the content and Amazing. free content for children. Woo. Yeah. So you just found this, you, you didn't, yeah. you weren't really looking It just, you just saw this yeah. opening and, yeah. and, and jumped in, which is, yeah, which is a classic story, but yeah. yeah, a lot of people either don't see the opening or see it and don't jump in. Right. Um, yeah. And, and then to create the content is one thing now to actually start to build that audience. You mentioned digital marketing. Yeah. How much of that were you, did you, use to push the snowball off the top of the hill so a, to speak a lot of it was just generic seo so the titles description tags and all that <clears throat> sorry um yeah all of that the title description tags just came into play just i didn't really work on backlinks or anything like that it was more so um giving it a good foundation of seo and then from there creating more and more videos with good foundation of seo and now the algorithms have changed so much that uh, I think the most important thing is creating good quality content that people listen to, watch, or whatnot all the way through. So the retention time. Because back in the day, um, you could just put a video out and put a thumbnail and make a clickbait title, and then someone would click it, and then it got that view. And then right. from there, um, like a celebrity doing something crazy, but then it just comes to a video of someone like talking like, hey, this celebrity did this, but right. it wasn't Most that Most annoying thing on the internet, totally. by the way. Yeah, and so then <laughs> those got you know popular, but then obviously YouTube and the algorithms change, and now it really comes down to good quality content. So, yeah. 
So, and then that comes into passion, you know, like you have to be passionate about what you do or it's not going to work, I yeah. believe. So, so, and, and then were you spending money on advertising back then? On, N- no. Um, so it was purely people just, your, yeah. your audience just found you yeah. and it just grew. There's one time, so I've spent, um, in the year number one, uh, or year number two, right around there. I just had a coupon for like 300 bucks on Google. They give them out all the time. So it, yeah. So I just used that, was used that. But at that point, I already, it, I already had like a million views or whatnot. So it, I really, it. So you think you just sort of hone, you just had this formula that connected. Yeah. Um, did you, did you kind of just fall into that formula, or did you benchmark other things? Do you like scanning Caillou or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or Blue's Clues for like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna need these kind of pants or right. So I think the so. Everything from the branding I thought about from the very beginning, from the name, um, you know, the B-L-I-P-P-I, that's the shortest word with the least amount of letters, so the most repeating letters, said from the front of the mouth, because I remember in middle school, I learned that children learn speaking from the front of the mouth rather than the back of the mouth, and um, then from there I created probably like 600 to 800 uh, words, so I'd sit there and go, blah, blee. Blah, ooh, CC, T2, you know, so I yeah. created a bunch All of good them. options, by yeah, the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I uh, did domain searches, trademark searches, copyright, and all that stuff. And then the colors, those I thought into as well. Like So the blue and the orange for people who yeah. aren't familiar. Yep. I, I, liked, uh, I liked green as well. Um, just in general, I, I try to think of, okay, what are the most popular colors for children in general? Um, and green I got rid of just because of green screen and how prevalent those are. Um, but then blue and orange, blue means trustworthy, orange is fun and creative. And so, you know, the, the base Perfect. is blue, which is, yeah. you know, the foundation. And then there's orange, which is the suspenders and glasses. Um, yeah. But then from there, when it comes to the actual content, I just looked at the things that um, impacted me as a child in not even just me from two to six but also older as well so when i was a teen like like i said how it's made like although i don't really do too much how it's made i like i like that quality and style of content of showing something from the beginning to the end or how it works you could say like how an airplane works and what the engine is and you know then incorporating now i incorporate those shapes and colors and simple math within those say machines or within that activity that i'm doing rather than at the very beginning it was more so um you know let's learn about the color yellow or something right um now it's you know hey this is yellow but yeah anyways. and then the feedback you're getting is that coming through social media because presumably now if, if i What's amazing, actually, is my, my son's like, hey, I've got some recommendations for, you know, the next version of Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda. And he's got a, he wrote a letter. And I thought, yeah. I've actually probably got a pretty good chance of finding someone to actually read that, right? I yeah. can reach, I can LinkedIn or Instagram. So presumably people are finding you quite easily. Yeah. And are you listening if people are Now you? or back then? Well, or both. Just, okay. Uh. <laughs> back then, yes. Now, no. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. Uh, back then, I was uh, I could read a lot more because I had more time. Sure. Um, but I'll, in in now, there's people that screen the emails and comments of you know. Obviously, there's going to be trolls sure. on, online saying I'm stupid because I dance around <laughs> acting like a clown. You know, whatever. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I've tried to push that stuff away because negativity isn't good for anyone when you're trying to build a business so um but when it came to the beginning i remember looking at the comments and emails for inspiration and stuff like that but it was more so keeping the the positivity and the um encouragement up for what i was doing at the time of not being super successful or whatnot yeah. so you, you know need, when, you needed that motivation totally man. yeah because yeah. at the beginning it was it was pretty hard i mean now it's cool when you say like when i tell people what i do like it, it's cool and people are like whoa that's crazy because of the views and it's successful but when when you're starting something it doesn't matter what it is especially if it's a 
children's show and, and you're in your mid 20s from there people you know like why you could be <laughs> doing feature films you could so it's just you know one of those things of like when I got emails from I, I could still remember emails from people that emailed back then when I wasn't super popular thanking me for doing this content because I remember there's this family that emailed and they have a picture on on the beach and um, one of the children is autistic and, you know, just thanking me for this content. It's the only thing that they watch. And oh, it, yeah, powerful, anyways, yeah. so it, it's nice having that, that encouragement. But at the same time, if you're reading those things, you're obviously going to be reading negative things. So one, one of the things that maybe I'd suggest to people in general is maybe not even read a lot of this stuff, just well, I just because you needed the, I mean, how many episodes before you felt people were really watching? I mean, were you were you going? Yeah, you know, you do five episodes. You're like, hey, am I doing a sixth episode? Is anyone actually listening? Do you, did you yeah. feel like you need that? I mean, there, validation. That, or that first year definitely took me, because uh, that year it took me a year to get a million views, roughly, let's say, and that's a pretty darn quick onset for just internet stuff in general. I feel like, yeah. and um, I, I, I also started another business at the time. It was basically generating leads for real estate agents. Um, so I'd get get the leads, and then from there pass them to real estate agents. They'd give me a referral fee huh. um, when those things closed. So, anyways, I like to think about just businesses in general. So yeah. I was actually doing a lot of those things at the same time as well as being a landlord and stuff. So um, what was the question? Sorry. It was really about, you know, did how long was it until you felt oh. people were listening? I mean, because yeah. I'm interested is, yeah. you, you know, there needs to be some sort of perseverance to, mm -hmm. in my mind, if I put out a couple episodes, maybe it's because I want instant gratification, <laughs> but I'm, I mean, is it fourth, fifth, sixth episode? And you're like, is anyone watching this? And yeah. do I keep going? I mean, that year was even at a, a, a million views over a span of a year. You can't live off of a million views every year, you know, one million. Right. So it was still, it, and it it's sucky to say that that was the benchmark that I was looking at was how many views and uh, eventually when can I support myself so then I can continue to create the content and make it better for the children and stuff. It wasn't so much like um, how many emails of thankful parents it was. It was more so the views, which Right, it, that was the only metric for you. Yeah, was, yeah, and yeah. in, in it in it sucks, but at the same time, you know, my goal was to eventually be able to do this full time. So then I could create the content at a regular pace, make it better, and, and to inspire children to enjoy learning and stuff. Um, How many views do you have to be getting before you can start monetizing through advertising? Uh, well, now it's I think zero. I think anyone can monetize at this point. You just have to have either a business license or um, a social security number or something. Yeah. So I think YouTube has opened it up. At that time, same thing. Yeah, at that time, yeah. they, they kind of rolled it into anyone. And but it was more a question of how many views to actually pay, pay to, the bills. To, to pay the bills, yeah. yeah. And there was a time I remember, um, you know, I wasn't doing to, although I, I bought a house at that time, like, you know, I just put a down payment on, that was the majority of my money. And it wasn't an expensive house, it was just a, a cheap dump. Um, so I was a slumlord at the time. But like, you know, I, I wasn't doing well, like I, from the beginning, like it wasn't like, it was super easy. You know, I remember there was, there was a time that I, I was like, how am I gonna pay the bills? Like, right. as I'm like doing this children's thing that everyone's saying like, why are you doing this? You know, like th this is pointless. You could, you know, continue to do client work and do you just have a you had a conviction that it was going to work or yeah yeah like i i don't know what it was but i just thought like if i can grow it to this then you know i feel like it would be successful like if i could tr tour the country and do meet and greets and live shows and create a uh, a show on disney or whatnot and these are the steps that i need to go to do that and you were thinking big yeah yeah totally right from the yeah. outset yeah yeah, from the very beginning, I thought to myself, if I could do a live show and have people go out of their way to see 
this live show and bring their children there because I know it's a lot easier with children. I don't have children, but I know it's a lot easier to stay home and watch something or let them play outside or you know whatnot than go out of your way to even go out to a restaurant with them. You know, yeah. when when they're that age, it's way easier to just stay at home. So I just thought if I could create a live show that people will go out of their way to see that is success in a, a kid show in my eyes. Yeah. Know, that's what I thought back Absolutely. then. Absolutely. So yeah. And have you reached that point yet? Uh, yeah. Are you uh, doing live shows? We're not doing live shows, but we can definitely do them right now and meet and greets. Um, like you guys are going to see, it's going to be nuts in a way of like, yeah. <laughs> it, meet and greets are very hard to do now because of how many people there are. And I devote my time to the children. Like I give eye contact, just like yeah. when I'm looking in the, the camera lens, like I'm, I'm imagining myself talking to the children and stuff. And so when we do these meet and greets, I'm spending time with every single child and I want them to remember that moment. So I'm looking at them in the eyes, asking them if they have any questions. And you know, it, it's hard because I want to spend more time than people telling me in the ear, hey, you need to speed it up. You need to, you know, go quicker. But like- How much of you is in the, in the blippy character? Is, is it, when you're talking to the yeah. kids, how much is acting and you, it must have yeah. a lot of yourself in there. Totally, yeah. yeah. I feel like all Blippy is is just me at a happier, more energetic state than right. than me. Even the voice. Man, we I all need to, to be a little bit Blippy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm going into yeah. Blippy mode uh, <laughs> yeah. for Friday night. Just a happier version <laughs> yeah. of me. Blippy mode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you do a meet and greet, yeah. were you surprised the first time you did one to see who came? Uh, yeah, that I did wait. I think at that point it was two, three years in. Um, yeah, two to three years in, and there was you know a lot of people. How many that, people that come came. to these things? Um, the first one was maybe like five five hundred people with with children. Right. Um, and that was so that's year. a thousand. Y yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, every every, yeah, every let, kid comes with yeah. Let's at say at least one. Um, and then. The last one we did, there's a few in between, obviously. They just kept growing, and they're pretty relative to the amount of views that you get, I feel like. And obviously, it depends on marketing or whatnot. Like, um, one I did in Tampa, I, was, I just had a free day because I was down there meeting uh, a company, and I had a free day the next day. So I was just like, yeah, wouldn't it be cool if I just did like a free meet and greet? So that I didn't have merchandise. I, you know, it was just a free day, and I thought, Maybe I could do a meet and greet on the beach. I saw a playground while driving to the, this meeting. And so I just sent an email blast to the people and, uh, and, uh, meet hey, me on the Facebook. beach in, uh, in an yeah, hour. Yeah. I, I said it was actually that night, the, the night before. So it was 18 hour notice. And I was there all day long just meeting people. Like, uh, one of the people brought a drone and you could see the line like, sw uh, squiggling like this and it, yeah it was over like a football field long and there's just wow. yeah it's crazy Amazing. but um now there's thousands of people that come and um i have to be there for mul multiple days if you know if you, you want do a real one. yeah so, so tell me where one. this is now in terms of the scale of yeah view how many views do you get on a when you put a video out now um i think it really depends on on the video if it's a good video or a not good video because i could tell a difference between a real good video and a not good video primarily um with the views but also like they'll they'll Alyssa, uh, my girlfriend she she works with me she does all the social media she'll say like everyone's saying that their children's watching this one multiple times in a row where it's like okay that's going to be a good one because um not good new ones let's say the child will watch it once or twice but yeah. a good one they'll watch it Over you know over. six seven times in a row and then from there it's like cool whatever with that video made it exciting to the the child i need to look at that and then analyze it see what i believe made that good and then continue to do that build off of that um but uh yeah what was your question how many views okay. are we talking about now that you're rolling with this yeah. so now we're at across the channels around 400 million views a month um so pretty good 
Not bad. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, Homie, I want to ask you now, because we're obviously, here, here we have this mega YouTube sensation for two to six-year-olds, and here you are in the K-Swiss office. <laughs> so, uh, and I think Homie was the connector here. Yeah. So, Homie, talk about what, where your mind was and what's going on. So again, yeah, little guy was just always asking about Blippi. So he's probably uh, maybe a, a million of those views. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> in, in less than a year. Yeah. Easy. So I basically felt, you know, we needed a kids collab because my, my thinking is at the end of the day, we need to create the next. Um, we have to look out into the next 40 years of our brand and have the people that are two to six now grow up in their 40s and be like, yes, K-Swiss was part of my childhood. Yeah. I'll buy my kids case with now. So if we don't do something like that, we're failing as a, as a brand to, you know, be relevant and innovate and grow with our audience. So when I saw you, it was perfect. I just yeah. saw the, the, the merchandising opportunity, the color scheme. It was very signature. I felt I had to call you and here we are. I Ooh. got, I got a hold of you and I gave you a pitch yeah. from A to Z before I even talked about product. And how did you find him? I just, just looked him up through and, social. I, and I started, I hit him up on DMs. I hit him up through an email. I hit him That's up. So I'm saying you can reach anyone these days. Yeah. You just have yeah. to have a, something compelling that to say when you get there, but yeah, people are accessible now if you've got the right message. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just lucky you, you hit me right back and we had a nice little conversation yeah. next year, a couple of weeks later, you're in LA. So by surprise, yeah. hey, can I come in <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah. That was fun. Fun. It's first meeting. Just like walking in here was just like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, a legitimate shoe company that emailed me, you know, like that was, that was pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. And where is this thing going, homie? Are you able to say or? Absolutely. We have two shoes coming out next month, which is October. Mm -hmm. And you've teased it already on your social and we've had quite the interest. Yeah. Uh, I will say <laughs> that. Been a reaction to, and you've been wearing a version of the yeah. shoe, an adult version, yep. although this is going to be a kid's shoe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And have people noticed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of a lot of emails and like, hey, when's the shoes coming out? And you know, because people kind of get, you know, they're coming out, and so and everyone knows it's kind of later this year. And you know, I don't want to say too much because yeah. of you know, I know this is a a group thing going on, and but you know, people are just super stoked on well, on well, everything. But no one knows about the the meet and greets. No, not yet. Yeah. But I will say though <laughs> that your audience help dictate the delivery month of the shoe really yeah in what way so when you were in india uh -huh. and we were going back and forth i said hey i'm going to foot locker foot inc okay to pitch the shoe for okay. the first time yeah i said i need your help if you don't mind tease the shoe yeah. on your instagram just to see what people would think because you were already wearing as part right. of our of our strategy you were wearing the adult version without uh -huh. saying anything and people were noticing yeah so I said, okay, let's follow that up with a teaser of the kid's shoe. Yeah. So I walked into Foot Locker, less than 15 hours of you posting it. I walked into Foot Locker. I told them about you. Of course, they didn't know who you were. They didn't have, many of them didn't have kids. Yeah. So they were like, I don't know if we can sell this thing. So after doing this amazing presentation, they tell me that. And I said, you sure about that? And they're like, yeah, we don't know about this. I pulled out my phone. I said, look at this. And they literally looked at all the comments. We're talking about hundreds of comments, several thousand likes on his Instagram. And I, I kid you not, out of the several hundred comments, I would say about 10% equally said, I need this before Halloween because my <laughs> nice. kid has already oh, said that yeah. he is going to be you for Halloween. Yep. Oh, there you yeah. go. I never so, even thought of that. So, so yeah. Foot Locker was like whispering among each other. I spent the entire week at Foot Locker Inc. that week. Crazy. It was only a one-day meeting and we were there the entire week because everybody wanted to talk about it. Wow. Based off the 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 hard evidence, the, the, the comments That's from right. the audience. Yeah. yeah. I'm social. There That's you go. crazy. Yeah. It, it's super nice being able to, you know, do these things where it's like, there's no person telling me I can't, you know, post that when you're like, Hey, let's do this. I was like, sweet. And I actually had uh, someone over there while I was in India, like, you know, take a picture up and, you know, I remember that image and yeah. it's super cool. Just, you know, that we could just do this and no one can say no you know right i don't know it's yeah. it's crazy technology is moving so quick and yeah. it's really cool that i didn't know that, that yeah and that, that was that, that was the plan out. from the very beginning was like how do we show that this is a real desire how do we show that this is there's a real audience behind you yeah. it's not these fictitious numbers there's people there's souls behind you know there's a there's a couple hundred thousands of my son just like my son and daughters that 
there's fathers that like dressing up like you. It's like, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Halloween is definitely one of those times that gives you a nice boost of confidence. I actually, I actually know the Halloween song from that episode, believe it or not. (laughs) Please please don't sing it. (laughs) I could see you. I could see you winding up. (laughs) She took a deep breath in. I'm like, is he going to sing this? I'll save you that. (laughs) So what are you able to say about um, launch dates, available at, anything like that? Yeah, it's definitely going to be available at blippy.com. It'll be available on caseswiss.com and Kids Foot Locker and Foot Action. Great. Um, now, Stephen, I want, couple, last thing I want to ask you is, um, obviously, this is a shoe pro, pro, project, should I say, between you and K-Swiss, which is great. But you're also a, entre- a classic entrepreneur case. Yeah. Um, and as you know, we, that's our muse as a brand is, uh, we think these you know, young entrepreneurs making amazing things happen are the new heroes of culture and you're, you're absolutely one of them. So I'm interested for the audience to hear from you. What are the most important traits you think in an entrepreneur, um, as they go into this, like what do you, what, are, what are the kind of DNA components you think someone has to have? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think dedication and determination for sure is number one and having a good roadmap on what you want. And then from there, you can see the steps along the way of how to get to wherever you want, whether that be a a financial goal or whether that be a time goal of you want X amount of time free per per week or whatnot, and being dedicated to act on those steps along the way. Um, and there's going to be things that you have to get rid of in your life because um, there's a lot of time sucks out there. And uh, so I think realizing what you have to do and not being afraid to act on that in, in whatever way. So I think that's definitely one of those things. Um, being smart about what you're doing from the very beginning. Um, so, you know, don't just do uh, stuff because then it might be garbage. But at the same time, on the flip side, don't not do stuff because you have to do stuff, even if it is garbage. It's actually better, I believe, to do garbage than to not do garbage. So um, not being afraid to act on those steps, and that kind of goes hand in hand with what I just said of just take action, even if it's going to not be as good as what you believe your product can can be and also maybe uh, be be creative don't just take something that someone else is doing and then just replicating it because right. then from there you're looking at it in a way of like oh this is going to be easy then it's not going to work because there's no passion in it because that's someone else someone else's passion maybe that passion was a hundred years ago when the first person did it or a thousand years ago when the first person did it um, y- you know you need to be creative in a way like whoever uh, like cake bops for example like those lollipop Mm -hmm. cake things I just think you know those kind of popped up I don't know a few years ago five years ago popped up (laughs) (laughs) Um, and when I saw those one time I was just like whoever thought of that is like super cool because like there's a lot of bakeries out there doing cakes and um, or or donuts or I guess I guess they're cakes but whoever thought of it their their process was Cakes are big, even when you slice it, you, you know, you share it and slice it even still. Like that piece typically is big and it, yep. they're just like, hey, how do I make it smaller? Oh, cake pops. Yep. Or, you know, I'm sure yeah. they did a lot of due di- diligence of like the name and stuff. But, you know, just being creative is one super huge thing. And I think it's also hard to give you a clear answer of what I believe is important because there's many types of entrepreneurs. I feel like people that create businesses, um, create brands, there's there's investors there because investors are still entrepreneurs. They're sure. looking at something and seeing if it's a good buy or whatnot. So um, I, I guess. I, yeah, that's I a good answer. And you mentioned yeah. earlier about passion. You've said that yeah. a couple of times yeah. about that's, how important that is to. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the mix. I I'd definitely say that's really important because whatever it is, if there's no passion in it, it's definitely going to die out. Yeah. You know. And keep the negativity out, which I think totally. is good advice for everybody because there's a lot of it swirling around these days. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's way too yeah. easy to uh, to have negative energy and um, yeah. don't allow that in. 
Uh, anyway, I, I really appreciate you spending the time with us. I know that you and Homie have got some work to do here in the uh, showroom, so I'm going to let you guys get on with it. Um, what a great story and, and fantastic what you've achieved um, through all through your own blood, sweat and tears. And I think there's, you know, if ever you people out there think that, you know, there's obstacles in your way or you can't do it, I think you can look at Stephen's example that really... It's all possible if you just put your mind to it and go for it. And here's someone who was in the Navy and working a job in L.A. and is uh, now a multi-million viewed YouTuber with a steady uh, income stream and working on a sneaker. Really amazing story. I really appreciate you sharing it with us. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with uh, when we go see the shoe. And with that, we'll see you on the next one. Stephen John, a.k.a. Blippi. Thank you for being part of it. Woohoo! Yeah.